Tonight on Q2, a key hearing takes center stage in Montana's capital city. It all revolves around the state's new drag show bill, which sits in limbo as Montana's pride show is set to begin. Plus, near record rainfall and high heat. For a lot of other lifeguards that I talked to here at Rose Park, it's tough for them. They started finding other jobs and other things. It's a recipe that spelled some trouble for Billings Parks and vandals strike a Crow Agency church. It's always been a part of this community. I don't know who it is, but I hope that, you know, they don't do this anymore. A place of worship for more than a century left with many questions and few answers. The MTN News starts right now. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 10 o'clock news. Well, good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us on this Wednesday. I'm Russ Riesinger. It has been nearly one year since the PACT Act was passed in Washington. It's a law back from the beginning by Montana Senator John Tester that expands VA health care and benefits for veterans exposed to burn pits, Agent Orange, and other toxic substances. And today at a hearing, Tester, while acknowledging it's making a difference, pressed VA officials for better implementation. Tonight, our David J has more on some of the changes already being seen. Veterans say the Veterans Administration is doing its best to implement the PACT Act and want to see continued oversight from Congress. The reviews coming in are mixed, but the Senate seemed to be pleased with what it heard from the VA at the hearing. Who knows what we put in those burn pits? I mean, everything went in there. Randy Stiles served in the U.S. Marine Corps and the U.S. Army and was deployed in Iraq in 2005 and 2006 when he was exposed to toxic burn pits. He's now the District 3 commander of the VFW Department of Montana and knows the veterans' medical needs. The PACT Act is very, very, very important for the veterans now, for the veterans in the past, and the veterans in the future. The Sergeant First Class Heath Robinson honoring our promise to address Comprehensive Toxics Act of 2022 or PACT aims to help toxic exposed veterans with health care and benefits. The Senate Veterans Affairs Committee chaired by Senator Tester heard from the Veterans Administration about the law. Veterans and their survivors have filed more than 772,000 PACT Act related claims since August 10th. And thanks to the efforts of our dedicated staff, 425,000 of those claims have been completed, with a nearly 79% approval rate for PACT Act related claims. One veteran said on the phone that it has been difficult just logging into the system for PACT benefits, something other veterans have told Senator Tester. It's also critically important VA works to make his website easy to find and even easier to navigate. And the Senator heard from Undersecretary Dr. Sharif El Nahal about a commitment to a review of the Montana VA health care system, which has processed about 4,000 PACT Act claims from veterans in the state. I think this PACT Act is making a real difference in veterans. I hear from them all the time. And the senator and the veterans say they will continue to hold the VA accountable and monitor the effectiveness of the PACT Act. I did that for the love of my country because I was a veteran, and I think the country needs to love us back uh, for what we did. In Billings, David J. MTN News. A House Oversight and Accountability Subcommittee held a historic hearing on unidentified anomalous phenomena today. It's what we used to refer to as UFOs. Lawmakers heard from three witnesses, including former U.S. military and intelligence community personnel who claim to have come in contact with such objects. A retired Navy commander, David Fravor, testified before Congress about an encounter he can't explain, a strange tic-tac-shaped object that was in the sky during a 2004 training mission. And whistleblower David Grush, who formerly worked on the Defense Department's UAP task force, says he was denied access to information on a government UFO crash retrieval program. He claims non-human biologics came with some of those recoveries, something the Pentagon disputes. Do you believe that our government is in possession of UAPs? Absolutely, based on interviewing uh, over 40 witnesses over four years. I know the exact locations. A recent report revealed the government is investigating more than 650 potential sightings. A federal judge in Helena heard arguments this afternoon on whether to enjoin a new state law restricting drag show performances. This hearing comes just days before Montana Pride is set to begin in the capital city. And organizers say they are still awaiting permits for the event. MTN political reporter Jonathan Amberian was in court and has more. 
On Wednesday, attorneys for the state of Montana questioned the need for a temporary restraining order to block the state's new law restricting drag performances. But attorneys for the plaintiffs said the law has already had a snowball effect in chilling people's free expression. About 40 people were in attendance Wednesday for the hearing in front of federal district judge Brian Morris. The case centers on House Bill 359, passed during the 2023 legislature. The bill prohibits drag story hours at public schools and libraries during their normal operating hours, and it bans sexually oriented performances on public property and in areas where minors could be in attendance. Plaintiff's attorneys said the bill's restrictions on drag story hours were improperly restricting speech based on its content or viewpoint, and that the restrictions on sexually oriented performances were too vague and left people not knowing what they can and can't do. What today's hearing really solidified is that nobody seems to know exactly what it says. The plaintiffs are particularly calling for a temporary restraining order because of the upcoming events scheduled for Montana Pride in Helena, set to begin on Sunday. And so we know um, Billings Pride happened but there was no drag performances allowed on public property as a result of House Bill 359. Um, and so again, the fact that there may be different interpretations of House Bill 359 is in and of itself um, evidence of a constitutional problem. The city of Helena said they do plan to issue a permit for the events, but they supported the call for a restraining order, saying the law leaves their employees in an uncertain legal position. Attorneys for the Department of Justice said the law wouldn't prevent drag story hours at private businesses and that people wouldn't face prosecution for participating in pride events. They argued the state does have authority to put stricter regulation on expression that could have an impact on minors and when public funding is involved. Morris said he'll issue a ruling on the request for a temporary restraining order as soon as possible. The next hearing on a request for a longer-term injunction is likely to be scheduled sometime in late August. In Helena, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News. The Federal Reserve has raised its key interest rate to the highest level in 22 years, with it now sitting at 5.5 percent. Fed Chair Jerome Powell announced the quarter of a percent rate hike this morning. The move is part of the Fed's efforts to fight persistent inflation and stabilize the U.S. economy. In his announcement, Powell said the Fed is seeing progress after more than a year of regular hikes, but said no decision has been made about future interest rate increases. Thanks for your pictures. Going to start off with this one from Josie, who's in town from Boise, 12 years old. Great shot of the Absorky sunset. Thanks for sharing that one. How about this one from Emerson, seven years old in Lockwood, and a beautiful sunset picture there as well. As long as we're on uh, on a pattern here, we got Rick, 76 years old. Beautiful flowers, though. Rick is a dynamo. I got to tell you that. And here we go. You want to send us pictures, you can do it on our free downloadable weather app. Get all the local forecasts, upload pictures to us, use the interactive radar. It is like the Swiss Army knife of weather apps. Check it out. There's even a special blade to cut me some slack on the forecast, which is coming up. The moisture-filled June, coupled with this recent hot stretch, is throwing a curveball at the city of Billings. The spring flooding and near record rainfall brought additional impacts that city officials didn't see coming. One of those being attendance at pools way down from a normal year, leaving lifeguards out of work. But there were some positives to take away. Lena Howder has the story. The month of June was one of the wettest on record for the city of Billings, and the city is still feeling the effects from it in good ways and bad. <laughs> Rose Park Pool may have been packed with people today, but that wasn't the case back in June. It's been a little tough. Uh, during the month of June, we had all that weather, so that certainly hurt our revenue, hurt our attendance. The city received over six inches of rain in June with 20 days of precipitation, and that meant less folks at the pools. We saw about a 39 to 40% uh, reduction in attendance, and it's strictly weather related. A 40% reduction in attendance means a 40% reduction in revenue for both the city and the workers. A lot of us are lucky to be in high school and have parents support us, but we have some, and even our pool managers, that do some of this for a living and need 
the money for it. Lifeguards like Christopher Piccioni lost nearly a month's worth of wages because the pools were closed, some even finding other jobs. A downer for them and general pool goers like Ali Tizak and her 10 year old son. He has been asking from the day school let out, can we go to Rose Park? Can we go to Rose Park? Can we go to Rose Park? The Tizaks couldn't come in June, but they're here now, as is Daisy Kind. It was a bummer, but I'm just glad we're making up for it now because I love the pool. Though the rain may have dampened summer plans for pool goers, there is a silver lining for the city. All that rain meant they didn't need to water. Normally we try to get all of our irrigation systems up and running before the end of May. It's just kind of, we just know that that's what we need to do. We had systems that we hadn't even turned on yet till the middle of June. Now that the weather has turned around, everyone hopes park attendance will too. Take advantage of being able to come out with the weather being good. It's a hot summer so far, so yeah. In Billings, Alina Howder, MTN News. It's been a Crow Agency place of faith for more than 130 years, but today parishioners at Community Baptist Church are frustrated and asking why after it was vandalized Sunday. Multiple windows at the church were smashed out and are now boarded up. The church is one of the first structures ever built in Crow Agency, and this act has been met with several emotions. This is a to me like a vintage building and so for somebody to vandalize it that just made me sad and to me that was disrespecting um, our ancestors and the people before us. I don't know who it is but I hope that you know they don't do this anymore. Church officials don't believe the crime will be solved and as of now there is no news about an investigation. Still to come on the MTN 10 o'clock news here on Q2. The search for a missing woman in Glendive is now nearly a month old. Next, we'll hear why this may not be your average missing persons case. Then later in sports, a Billings softball team looks to keep the good times rolling after completing an epic comeback. We'll hear from our athletes of the week coming up in just a bit.